Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I'm going to have a rant here. Yes, a rant. Uh, so if there happen to be children in the room, you need to make them leave. Leave immediately. In fact, I'll give you the count of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now then, children need to leave. If you wish to explain to them why this strange man on the internet says bad, bad words. Yeah, not my problem. So, we're going to discuss something that was a tragic, horrible event that happened here in the province of Ontario yesterday. Last night, there was a young, 12-year-old young lady from Mississauga. And for those of you that don't know the geography of the province of Ontario, you've got Toronto, which is the center of the universe, Mississauga is slightly left. Um, she went to visit her father at 3 in the afternoon. She was supposed to be returned by her father to the custodial parent, that being her mother, by seven. The child did not return. The mother of Raya Rajkumar, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, Raya was the 11-year-old young lady. Her mother went to law enforcement um, in 11.30 last night, an Amber Alert was declared. An Amber Alert was declared, and... The Amber Alert was lifted around 12.30 in the morning, so approximately an hour, hour and a bit later. That is after they found Raya, deceased, in a Brampton residence, which is believed to be that of her father's. Her father was then arrested, um, not too far from where I live, near um, Aurelia, Ontario, in a little place called Oromodonte on Highway 11. He was arrested because of a tip from a motorist, and the motorist had seen or heard the Amber Alert contacted the police and then the Ontario Provincial Police went out and did a high-risk takedown on this individual. To the family of Raya, I'm so sorry for the loss that you've endured. I, I can only imagine what you're going through right now. However, this is not about that. This is going to be the first announcement of the emergency asshole notification system. Yes, that is right. The emergency asshole notification system. Because about 383 people or more called 911 or various police agencies to say, why are you sending an Amber Alert? And then even more, thousands maybe, you self-absorbed numpties, you complete fucktards went to the, the Interverse, the Twittersphere, the Blogonet, and complained so let's just consider there's some distinct steps that the police need to go through now here in the province of Ontario the Ontario Provincial Police are the ombudsman or the controllers of, of the Amber Alert system essentially so your local police agency be it Peel Regional Police who declared this one or Toronto Police Service or, or any other police service they go through various checks and steps because there's a reasonable and probable belief that a child is in danger and in jeopardy. And in this case, the father of the young person made statements that he either intends to harm himself, his daughter, or both. He made these statements. So they're going to do things like call, visit, check every emergency room, call, visit every after-hours walk-in clinic, go through the accident reports, right? Visit your place of residence. Visit every place of residence you probably had for the last three or four places of residence. Go to your place of work. They're going to contact other agencies and other jurisdictions. If you're known to have family in British Columbia or family in Georgia or family somewhere else, um, they're going to go through a multi-step plan. There's going to be an incident command system. You're going to have um, dispatchers that are asked to stay back so they can continue what they're doing. You're going to have deputies, constables, officers, sheriffs, whatever you call them in your jurisdiction. They're either going to be called in earlier. They're going to be held back from leaving their shift. Or they're gonna just gonna call in and say I'm coming in earlier. They're gonna to go to their bosses, hey boss, I'm staying late to help get this solved, right? So you're gonna have a small battalion of people making phone calls, making visits, checking things off, going to places. And they visited this man's residence. And from the sounds of it, when the police visited, there was no si signs of, of villainy or chicanery. So they they didn't have reasons to go get a warrant to make an emergency entrance. Eventually, <coughs> the police are gonna do things like. Get a warrant for the GPS on your car or the GPS on your mobile phone so they can see where your phone or your car is. But unfortunately, 
there are these complete fucktards that went to the Interverse, the Twittersphere, and the Blogonet and decided to say stupid shit on the internet. And that's what we're going to discuss now. So the first contestant <clears throat> we have on the asshole, emergency asshole notification system is um, someone that goes by the name of Dark Bruise. And if I figure this out, right down there, it's going to be the little insert. Dark Bruise, how far is Peel from Ottawa? Ottawa shouldn't be getting an Amber Alert unless someone, or from somewhere hours away, it's completely illogical unless they magically teleported here. And then someone else who lives in Ottawa by the name of Dale Smith. Why are people in Ottawa getting an Amber Alert about Peel Region, which is hours away? Well, you're both right. It is hours away. But considering the child was supposed to be returned at 7 o'clock at night, 1900 hours, and the Amber Alert wasn't issued till 2330, right, or 1130 at night. So Ottawa from Brampton is approximately 477 kilometers. That is about 4 hours and 40 minutes of driving, depending on the speed you're driving and conditions of the road. And considering the last known time the victim was seen was 3 in the afternoon and the Amber Alert was not issued till 11.30, it is completely reasonable and probable that person could have made it to Barrie, Ontario, to Windsor, Ontario, or the better part to Windsor, Ontario. They could at least be in London by now or by then. They, you know, There's so many places they could have been. Right? So don't be complaining that why are we getting a notification? Right. And then the next one, you know, because these two idiots in Ottawa weren't good enough, there's Ken Hildebrandt. Ken Hildebrandt happens to live in Manitoba, right? His post was, why did I get an Amber Alert from the Peel region in Ontario on my phone in Winnipeg? Well, Ken, you weren't successful in completing grade 8 geography because you're so fucking self-absorbed. Ontario, Manitoba happen to share a common border. And in fact, no one's even built a wall between Ontario and Manitoba. I'm willing to do that, though, to keep you the fuck out of my province. And I don't care if it's a flat earth model, a young earth creationist model, a hollow earth model, um, a round globe earth model, or if it's a flat hollow earth with a black sun model, Ontario, Manitoba happen to share a common border. So seeing how Mississauga, Brampton and Pearson International Airport are so closely together. It's possible that this individual could have gotten on an aircraft with his daughter and traveled, or it's also possible he may have been trying to fish hook into Manitoba via Thunder Bay. Right? So why did you get that Amber Alert? It's because it's reasonable to assume he might have been able to travel a portion of that distance or may have been heading to Manitoba itself. Right. It's also quite possible that Peel Regional Police, in conversation with the Ontario Provincial Police, decided to be a little bit um, extra vigilant to make sure that jurisdictions in Quebec, jurisdictions in Pennsylvania, jurisdictions in New York State, and jurisdictions in Manitoba, as well as all the jurisdictions in Ontario, were aware of what's going on. Now we're going to encounter a few special individuals that seem to think that the Amber Alert was a bit excessive, that there's some other appropriate response that should have been taken because what was done was just completely unnecessary and the police were just, you know, wasting their time. Not the police's time, but these idiots' time. Um, and the cops just maybe just look the other way or something. So, Jennifer, and you are at JM Lovelock. Here's your lovely tweet. Last night was a gross misuse of the emergency alert. Not only was I bolted awake for the Amber Alert, I was then jolted two more times for an update, and then the ending, if the, Am if the Amber Alert at 12.30 a.m. We really needed alert for updates? Actually, yes, you did. Okay. So, Jennifer, I'm so truly snor sorry, you special, special snowflake. I'm sorry that your slum slumbers have been disturbed while well, a mother was worried about the safety of her child. Well, dispatchers were staying in overtime and police constables were out doing their job, performing a flurry of activities trying to safely return this child home. Unfortunately, the f child was murdered by her father. Right? And why were the updates important? Things change. This would have been a highly fluid, highly frenetic situation. Things would have changed. The only way you as an individual are going to find out about those changes is with an update. 
Then we come to Mr. Ride the Fence. Hi, Ride the Fence. <clears throat> his, his lovely bit of internet prose. This Amber Alert was so excessive, I say we use your voices. I say it was, it was sent all over Ontario. Scared the hell out of our home. I hope you get back to sleep. Well, Ride the Fence. In regards to using your voice all over Ontario, please, I, I encourage you to go find a rusty pair of tin snips and remove your fucking tongue. Right? Ride the fence. How do you suggest that the police look for a young person that, that's in danger when that young person happens to be with her father? Right? The person you're supposed to be able to implicitly trust are at least one of your parents. Right? And I hope when you happen to need the police that you get like the mediocre police, you know, those two detectives that are like three days away from retirement and they both have zero fucks to give because you're cutting into their retirement planning time. You know, I, I'm i sorry. Right? And then I've reserved the last three um, and I wasn't able or willing to do much more looking on this because it was really revolting. In fact, some people even deleted their tweets and I really wish Twitter would allow us to keep tweets up for a minimum of 30 days because some people were posting stuff and then they realized, oh shit, this went bad and they deleted their tweets, right? So I understand some of us may not have a positive outlook on the police due to our previous life experiences or things that have happened, but let's just all consider that the only reason why an Amber Alert is issued is there is a reasonable and probable belief that a child is in jeopardy or harm's way. That's it. That's the only reasons why. Right? So let's talk to Munchkin, who's at Mother Puker 67 at heel underscore PA. I do not appreciate the Amber Alert tonight. Why should all of Ontario be nuisanced by this? Not once, but at least five times. I want this changed. Well, I'm so sorry you were nuisanced. And I'm sure the mother of the young victim would like this changed as well. I like, I'm pretty sure she would like this changed to the point where her young person comes home to her. So, really, you were disturbed five times. Okay, great. Let's consider how many times the mother of the deceased young 11-year-old was disturbed yesterday. The father doesn't return her at 7 o'clock. No news. Not answering the phone. Have to call the police. Police start a flurry of activity. Police go knocking on doors. Police ask, hey, can I have your address book? I need your daughter's teacher's number. I need all this information. So I'm so sorry your life was interrupted and you feel we need to change the system in which we look for a young person in, in jeopardy. But then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, how do you suggest we change the system? Now then, let's talk to Paul McKeever at McKeever underscore tweets. It's 11.36 p.m. in Canada, or at least in Ontario. The police blast an Amber Alert through the speaker of multiple phones in my house to tell us to be on the lookout for a fucking Honda, a silver Honda. Stop. We do not work for you. We're not partner in policing. Okay. So you've got multiple phones. Great. Maybe you might want to consider turning your phone off at night. Well, Paul, I just got a simple thing to say. The next time your car broke, gets broken into, or your house burns down, or you need EMS because you've had a heart attack or a stroke. Stay the fuck off your phone. It's because of an alert driver that had received the Amber Alert, who was able to call in a tip to 911 so the Ontario Provincial Police could locate this piece of shit that murdered his daughter. I mean, I'm so sorry that you are so, so self-important, you were so self-involved, that you suffer from some form of social entitlement, that you think that you know, you as an individual can't help anyone. So if I ever happen to encounter you as an individual, and I ever happen to notice that you're in some kind of major conflagration and might be able to use the services of 911, I'm going to ignore you. And I'm going to ask you for the rest of your life, please ignore using 911. Now we come to the last, the best, the worst, and something that might turn your stomachs just a little bit. And this is the tweet that made me have to stop looking. This comes from Stefka, which is at sweet Stefka. You're going to determine she's not so sweet. Her wonderful piece of internet prose. <clears throat> what a move by at Peel Police Media. Sending this alert in the middle of the night, waking millions of babes, including my own. 
while one babe was being murdered or had been murdered by her father. Not Amber Alert worthy, if a child is with her father and consent was granted, what a poor use of this system. Save it for real emergencies. Sweet Stefka, you sweet and grateful self-entitled cunt. How self-absorbed can you possibly be? So when you give consent for one of your babes to be taken away from you in the accompaniment of someone else, and they don't bring that child back at the pre-prescribed pre time, or in this case, because there was a court order that said when that time would be, consent is immediately revoked. And just because you have consent doesn't mean that you're not up to evilness, right? So, you know, the next time one of your children happens to be in danger or happens to go missing, or you know there's a viable threat to that child, I'm going to implore you, stay the fuck off your phone and don't call the police. I would not want you to inconvenience someone else with your poultry troubles of an endangered child. Right? Yeah. Fuck. Right? <clears throat> I'm so sorry that you are so worried about your own children, you cannot see the advantages to this system. Right? Like I said at the beginning, there's a multi-step plan to facilitate an Amber Alert system, right? It's it's something that, at least in the province of Ontario, the, the originating police service starts out the Amber Alert and then the OPP continue the process because they're the ones that initiate the broadcast. This isn't something the police take lightly. This isn't something that is, is easily accomplished. So for those of you that wish to complain that your life was interrupted, by the Amber Alert system. Become a fucking member of the Amish where they don't have technology. Right? Go to a place where the Amish live and please join them where you don't have access to the internet, you don't use mobile phones, and you'll never be troubled by the Amber Alert system again. On that note, I'm going to step off my soapbox now. So, if you happen to have been enjoying my channel for the last seven months, because we're coming up on actually eight months after my stroke shortly, please like, share, subscribe. If you happen to be going through your own post-stroke journey or know someone that is, please point the channel out to them. You may get some useful content out of it. <clears throat> if you happen to know someone or see someone or even in yourself, someone that looks like they're befuddled, confused, having vision problems, having facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, uh, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.